welcome back to my studio again. We're, we're having a lot of fun here today. And Anyhow, we're going to, uh, my name, I'll give you my name first, Dick Ensley, and I live in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. But what we're going to do today, we're going to do a little oil painting, but we're going to do it in steps. I'm going to show you different stages. The painting has to go through stages. And one of the free art lessons we talked about was organize and plan your composition. Okay, so we've done that already. And this is the composition that you see here is the one we're going to paint. But we're going to do it in stages. First thing I'm going to do basically, and I've already done basically a, a value sketch of it. We're going to leave that alone. But I'm going to take and show you how to go through the stages of oil painting. Now I've got a book I've written called Painting the Illusion. I go through all those steps. But out here we're going to show you some of the some of the ways that you can do it and cut some of your time and, and learn how to paint. First thing I do, I, I've already laid out the composition. I've got it here. This is pretty much, this is over in Townsend, North Car uh, Townsend, uh, Tennessee, just as, as you approach the Great Smoky Mountains. It's a beautiful scene today. But what we're going to do here, and I'm going to do a, uh, basically a value sketch in one color. When I go out to paint landscape, plain air, I basically use cerulean to sketch. So let's start that. And these paints I'm using are very fluidy. They're, they've got beautiful uh, color. They're basically the Charbon. They work, they're excellent paints. They hold their, their color when they dry. They're very similar to what you see right here. Okay. Now I use these, use a, I lo like the long, long bristles on my brush, okay? They're called the, the flats. And they have the long, don't get the shorter ones because they're going to wear down the short. But get as long as you can. And you get a nice chisel edge on these, okay? Now when you first start sketching, do what I call it, just just gestural things. Look at it. Look for your horizon, which is right about here. Very lightly draw it in, even if you're just pretending you're drawing it in in your mind. Play with the canvas a little bit. Don't make you don't make a statement until you're ready. And then when you do, do it very lightly. Look for shapes. Look at the shapes here. This barn falls in a triangular shape. Okay. Then there's rectangular shapes within that. Then there's another rectangular shape here. There's another rectangular shape here. These are all rectangles here. Look at the clouds here. You got rectangle here. You got a, a, a I mean a rectangle. You got a triangle here. You've got ovals here. So all these shapes and what you're looking for is shapes, okay? And I like to use this color because this color especially in the summertime blends with every color that you see in summer. With the greens, with the blues, with the yellows. Okay. Now, basically, I want to place this. Put the center. Now, this is called what you call a geometric center right here. Don't ever place anything geometrically in the center. Put it to the left or to, to the right. It's much more interesting. It's called a visual center. This barn here, you wouldn't want to put that barn right in the center. It would be very boring. Put it off to the left right over here. Right about there, okay? So you have to draw a little triangle first. And then put, put your shapes into the triangle, okay? Watch your perspective. Okay? And all of a sudden, before you know it, you'll have this composition drawn on there. Now, we're going to do this rapid. I would spend, if I was out painting in the morning, especially early in the morning, I paint about 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the summer. I might take an hour just on this step, because if you'll take your time on these steps, the rest of it goes a lot easier, much quicker. Now, there's a difference between an artist and a painter. A painter paints, an artist draws, but you should have some drawing skills. Don't neglect that. See, this goes down. Now, look, here's a triangular right here. This whole field here is all in a triangular shape. Right about there. And let's start here on the top. Look at the look at the tree lines back here, okay? Follow follow the lines. Follow the lines. You know the old thing, follow the money, you'll find out where it goes. Well follow the lines here. Now, your composition, a good composition, will fall within a triangular shape, too. You've got a triangular shape here. 
You've got one here, so you've got one cut across the other one. Let's keep this one a little bit lower here. And this one we'll put way up here. We'll make this even a little higher than it is. Let's draw it in. Very lightly. As you get into it where it gets dark, if it gets dark, go a little darker. I like these. These are the uh, Pro Stroke brushes. Very nice. They wear good, especially the way I paint. I do a lot of scumbling. You'll, you'll like the way they, they hold up. Barn's got that barn. These old barns, all the roofs have gotten crooked and different angles. But you still need a little bit of perspective to show those here. And if you, you can't figure out the angle, these are called planes, not airplanes that fly. These are planes. This, that's a plane. That angle there, there's the angle. Now look at how the angle changes here. Okay, see? The angle here. See? Use your brush for that. Tell you, these little uh, free lessons online, I've watched several of them from friends of mine, and I tell you what, they're wonderful things. You can learn a lot from them. Okay? Now let's take a little bit bigger brush here. We've got enough information here. Let's just kind of scumble in some, some values. Okay? We're going to do basically a value sketch here. Okay? Let's take a little bit heavier brush. Okay? Now we're paint dry, I'm not using any turfs right now, okay? We'll do that and we'll get into the color so we can change our color, but right now we're just painting. Now let's scumble in some darks. See where the darks are? Take the side of your brush, scumble. This is called scumbling. It's a nice technique. Puts in the values for you. But don't skip around. Follow, follow the way it goes. Follow the lights. Follow the, the darks, the middles, the lights, okay? These brushes get better as they get worn a little bit. Now that line there, that I will probably bring that line, that light, it's called backlight, down just a little bit below that, that ridge there for composition sake. And this is choices that you have to make when you go out to paint. You know, if you don't like a tree there, take it out. A painting starts out very mechanical. There's a lot of, lot of uh, study that's got to go into it. But then you end up in the creative part of it. There's a, there's a certain kind of rhythm that will start in your painting as you get into it. And even in this, now I enjoy going through these steps here, okay? I could sit and do these forever, and I'll show you how to do a tonal painting here in a little while. Bring that way up here. These paints are very nice to use. They're, they they go on nice. That they uh, paint just as well as they do when you're doing this. Like I said, this is called a tonal or, or a value sketch, rather, basically putting in values, darks, middles, and lights. Keep in mind, what, what, what do values do? Values establish the form of the object. So a value shows you what it looks like. Intensity goes back and it comes forward. It's called color perspective. If it goes less intense, it goes forward to the back. If it comes more intense, it comes forward. Dark, 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 dark. Get into this barn a little bit here. Let's take a little smaller, the smaller brush here. Just kind of get in here. Whoops! I won't get too much paint on there first. I'm going to show you how to go through this. We'll do this in stages. Okay, and there's a shadow that comes down through here. And we talked about shadows. Shadows are always a complement of whatever color that. Say the barn is red, it, you'll see a, a, it'll cast a green shadow. But when it mixes with another color, it's going to 
more likely gray. So into those clouds just a little bit here. Some of that color that in the background. See all this beautiful cerulean color. Didn't do this in one color right now. We got those mountains in the background here. Let's put them in quickly. about you guys out there but I'm having fun with this and I'll tell you what this these different steps of painting you can enjoy them and have a whole lot of fun with them see I've brought this down a little bit past the roof of that barn too these darks okay let's go a little bit further than this I want to show you real quickly before we stop this and we'll continue you want to see what white really looks like Here's this is a permalba white I'm using here. I also use a sharpen, but I like the permalba and the, the two. But here's what white. See how white that is? Let's put a little bit of that. It's just to put a little bit in, into the clouds here. See how much whiter it is in the canvas? Brings up the value of the canvas just a little bit here. So you can go a little bit into here and bring that color down a little bit. We have one little area that I kind of missed here, this little spot right in here, this little light spot. See it right in there? This little spot. I just put it back in there. And this here basically comes down past our roof line, so that's got to be light right through there. Okay. Now, let me show you one thing. Just before we stop this, we're going to do a real, just a, a reconstruction. I'm going to do it just on the barn to show you what happens. Mix yourself in a, a very dark color, say an ultramarine in alizarin and go in here wherever you see it where it's dark go dark and watch what's going to happen here dark dark okay so it's not quite as dark back there not here a little bit dark in there go down not quite as dark here up here very dark here come down see what's happening this is called reconstruction I missed this a little bit. See, this has got to come over here. So this is when you reconstruct your your something you miss. You, you always get a chance to go back on your paintings. You never lost, never lost in them. Okay. But you do this to the whole painting. I'm just doing it in this one little spot just to show you what happens. To give you an idea, and this this is your reflection. Your mountain, this background comes right about here. Comes down through here. Comes in here. Okay. So this is called a uh, just a value darks, middles, and lights. Okay, we'll get into the color in another another ser series, but uh, right now we'll leave it at this. Here again, my name is Dick Ensing. You can look me up at my website, DickEnsingArtist.com. Write me for any questions. I answer all the questions. If you have any problems or you want to know something about a step, it's Dick Ensing at BellSouth.net. Appreciate you coming. Thank you. Mm -hmm.